Hello and welcome to The Eileen Silverman Show. I'm your host, Eileen, and on this week's program, our guests discuss the Girl Up Club, a United Nations Foundation organization that offers assistance to young girls in developing countries and advocates for the Girls Count Act. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're glad you've joined us for our program. To tell us more about the Girl Up Club at Buholtz High School, I'm pleased to introduce my guests, Bridget Foster, President, and Shannon Rush, Vice President, the Girl Up Club at Buholtz High School. And Bridget and Shannon, it's wonderful to have you here as guests. Thank you. Oh, well, that video is so powerful. Uh, so dynamic, so moving. It says a lot about the Girl Up organization. And I congratulate you for getting started with this organization at Buholtz High School. And Bridget, kind of tell us how that all came to pass. Um, first of all, what year are you at uh, Buholtz? Um, I'm a junior. Okay. And Shannon? I'm a sophomore. All right. Oh, so you have 
two more years, one more year to be involved. Mm. <laughs> okay, good. Well, how did it all get started? How long has the club been active? The club has been here, uh, this is its second year. All right. Uh, last year it was founded um, as I got involved with the Girl Up organization. I started right. following their emails and um, I really wanted to get involved to make an impact and help girls in developing countries. And uh, so I put in the papers and another girl from another state who right. had heard about Girl Up was also putting in um, applications to create the clubs. Oh, so. Wow. so it was just kind of good, mm -hmm. yeah, good timing all the way around. Mm -hmm. And now the Girl Up Club is part of the United Nations Foundation. So first off, um, that says a lot about this organization to start with. It really does. And so you you started about two years ago. And when did you you started? I guess just about a year ago I started when you the started. First year. Yeah. Good, good for her. you. Good for you. And about how many members do you have? I know you're small and growing, but just, you know, um, do you have girls and, and guys in the club, too? Yes, it's a, ah, okay. a misconception. It's called Girl Up, but mm -hmm. it is, um, the club for nationally is for girls by girls, but our club at Buholtz, we do support guys to join and girls because okay. it's an important topic for both genders to know about. It is. And as we've looked at, you know, just seeing that video and, and thought about um, probably how lucky so many of us are and how in other parts of the world girls are struggling. And as you said, um, the focus of girls, it, it, when you look at the website and everything about Girl Up, it is very powerful. Girls um, can really make a difference in all of their communities. They have that power within them, but only if they're given the opportunity for education and to, you know, empower themselves. So it seems to me that's an important word, empowerment, for what you want to do. And, and tell us a little more about the whole focus, Bridget. Um, beyond Gainesville, you've, you, you're targeting some uh, very worthy goals. Well, um, the target countries for Girl Up are Ethiopia, Liberia, Guatemala, and Malawi, and uh, soon they will be adding parts of India. Mm -hmm. So um, the club is, or Girl Up works through uh, the United Nations Foundation. Right. So 87% of all donations go directly to these girls to help give them an education, to create safe environments for them to live, because oftentimes girls in these in these developing, developing countries, countries, right. They're second class citizens. They're not as valued. Their education is definitely not as important. They're supposed to stay home. But right. when they are given the opportunity to learn, they can reach their full potentials. They benefit their whole society. They benefit their families. It just it all goes into place. It breaks that ugly cycle. Absolutely. Right. And there's, you have a way, um, okay, tell me about the $85 focus that you have going here as, as a form of a contribution because it, it, it goes far when you're talking about going into a developing country and that is uh, an important focus. Um, how does that work out? Or uh, Shannon, oh, join um, us. Sorry. Well, for um, breaking down the $85 uh -huh. that um, we give to each girl, which um, $85 will give one girl a year of education, and it's broken down. $13 uh, is for the books, the uniforms, and all the school supplies. Okay. $15 goes to like water, like clean water and sanitation. And thirty-eight dollars goes for electricity, for lamps, safety, and um, there's nine dollars for leadership and mentoring op opportunities. Wow! So you could say that eighty-five dollars is very well spent. And there is ten dollars counted for making sure the community plans to involve to girls. To involve girls, I like that. And we have lots more to cover. We're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
We're back talking about the Girl Up Club at Buholtz High School and Shannon and Bridget. Um, more about the opportunities for the community, whether or not, you know, um, involved with Buholtz High School, about contributing. Um, tell me about the FIVE program. Well, there's an easy way to donate just a little bit of time and money. It's called the High Five. Mm -hmm. It's where you take five minutes of your day to learn um, about the issues involved with women's rights and especially girls' rights in these developing countries. You can share five facts that you've learned. Um, you tell five friends about Girl Up and perhaps share the Girl Festo with them. Um, you donate five dollars and then challenge five of your friends to do the same. Okay, I like that. All right. Okay, the High Five program. How do I do? I go to the website that we're making available and donate through there. It's easy and simple. Absolutely. Okay. You can just go straight to GirlUp.org. There will be mm -hmm. a donation button. It's very simple. It'll go straight to the organization. Eighty-seven percent of your donation goes straight to the girls in these countries. Excellent. So I could be part of the High Five program with my five dollars. I could donate the eighty-five dollars where you have already broken down how much each of that, you know, how the dollars are spent to help mm -hmm. uh, women or young women in developing countries. And and Shannon, when you think about this opportunity, kind of the scenario that you see, um, especially if the girls do not get this help, what could be their life option? Well, what generally happens with all of these families in the developing countries is that the man goes to work and the mother stays home and takes care of the kids. And they choose to have many kids because, first of all, a lot of them don't make it to adulthood, and second of all, they believe that the children can work and bring in more money. Right. It actually does the opposite because the amount of money that the kids bring in is much less than the cost of having the kid alone. So what happens is it's a continuous cycle of wanting to have more and more kids so that they can bring in more money, and they just don't know it, that they're losing money. Right. It's really working against them. And when we talk about young women having kids, we could be talking about uh, somebody 15. Absolutely. Uh, and really we know from a health standpoint that is not advantageous for someone that young, and it could be even younger. I mean, the statistics are, are pretty startling, and you, you think about how they just never get to um, experience their true potential. And here you are, students working so hard uh, in high school. It's, it's like the opposite of what is ahead for you, for your goals and, and your dreams. It's kind of hard to think that your contemporaries so far away have such different options. Actually, the girls in these countries to be married at our age is very, very common. I know. That's what, when I read those facts, that's what startles me. And many of them already have kids. Right. <laughs> and when uh, Shannon says that they have more children to work the farms and um, bring in money, a lot of times they want boys to do the work because when they have daughters, um, the daughters may help work, they'll help in the house, but oftentimes they're just sold as child brides. And... Um, these children are sold very young. Um, one in five girls in Ethiopia is married by the age of 15, mm. and um, it causes a lot of health problems. You're right, when they have children so young, there's right. very high rates of STDs, sexual b abuse, and domestic violence are rampant. Right, and the girls are really rather trapped. So you were doing some very good things, and I know that you have some ways at uh, through the Girl Up Club at Buholtz that you've been getting out there to raise money, and um, you've uh, you started with one. Tell me about the movie that you started with, um, because uh, Half the Sky. Um, Half the Sky is a movie that brings celebrities to these developing countries that Girl Up works with, and they kind of show them the everyday life of what these families are like and you know how they struggle so much to make their money and you know the people mostly women that are being mistreated and abused and just not having the rights that they should have right so some testimonies and and uh, with celebrities who have the advantage to get into the opportunities mm -hmm. of talking with people uh, so you you showed it at Buholtz High School and mm -hmm. How many, about how many people came? I heard it was a, a good turnout, but um, that was uh, 
There was quite positive. a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We I had heard it was filled. We asked a lot of teachers to um, ask their students very mm -hmm. nicely to come and support us, and it turned and out it really well. Up. Okay, well done. We've got lots more to talk about. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're talking about the Girl Up Club at Buholtz High School and Shannon and Bridget. Lots more going on and another big fundraiser, Shannon. Tell me about the Mr. Buholtz pageant. Well, we have had two Mr. Buholtz pageants and we always do it in the spring. We just completed our second one. Okay. And it's exactly like a pageant that you would see on TV except not as much makeup or <laughs> glitter. And, um, of course, it's a Mr. Buholtz, so we have guys enter. We have about 10, and um, they will do a talent portion. They'll either want to actually show a talent or they'll just want to make fun of themselves. Right, one or the other. And but. then they go to the spirit wear, which is they wear our school colors, which is black and gold. Right. And then the third part of it is we ask them a question. We have a little hat on a stool, and they pull out a question, and they answer it, and it's usually... A normal pageant question. Right. How do you feel about world peace? <laughs> the, the whole comedy about that, right? Yes, and everyone wants to go because it's just very entertaining. Oh yeah, I mm -hmm. would think that the guys that get involved are a lot of fun, good sense of humor, and and hams love to to you know ham it up. And it, but speaking of that, um, now what's your mascot at Buholtz? Is that the Bobcat? Yes, we okay. have um, the Bobcat, and in one of the performances. A, a man who's a junior, he wanted to dance with the bobcat, like like, it. like um, waltzing. Right, okay. And um, so in the video that we made um, during when we were having Mr. Buholtz, right. um, the bobcat was looking like a little ballerina, she was wearing a tutu, and I was actually the one that was in the bobcat suit. <laughs> I know you loved it. How fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so not the bobcat in the tutu that's on the football field, but perfect for Mr. Buholtz. Yeah, I was only the bobcat for the Mr. <laughs> Buholtz. <laughs> but how fun. I mean, that is a real, a, another good way to involve the whole school, mm -hmm. uh, raise funds, but get more awareness of the Girl Up Club mm -hmm. and the United Nations Foundation and all that's behind that. And there are many other things. Um, and I hope I can come to the next one. Do you need judges outside Buholtz? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dura, okay. I was going to sign up. <laughs> but um, you're also doing some other important things. Um, so tell me about the Girl Count Act and, and what that all is and means. Well, um, the Girls Count Act is an act that is going through Congress and the Senate, mm -hmm. and it's um, basically asking our representatives to vote on a bill that will allow, it will make girls in developing countries a priority, a foreign policy priority. Right. Um, it's asking many girls and boys, in fact, many children in these developing countries are not given birth certificates. Right. They're just not counted. They come into the world and... They're there. No, the government, they do not exist to the mm -hmm. governments of these countries, so they cannot get passports, they cannot apply for federal aid. They don't right. exist, Just they're not counted, their needs are not accounted for. 
Right. So one of the things, um, we're an advocacy group, so we wrote a letter to our senators asking them to support this bill, and we got um, many signatures from the students I at like High School. To, um, so hopefully this bill will pass and you're, as it, and being an advocate is very important, making a difference. Look at these facts. 290 million children around the world today whose births are not recorded so far. That's amazing because it's something we would just take for granted. And you can see how it could really complica complicate your life as time goes on, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of awareness, a lot of things to learn about, actually, that... I didn't know. And there's still more to cover, so stay with us. We'll be right back. We're talking about the Girl Up Club at Buholtz High School. And let's talk, we're, we're talking about young ladies in developing countries, but let's look at our own country, United States of America. How are we doing here, young women? Um, certainly better, obviously, but how do you th see things as you look ahead? Um, I mean, certainly we have more rights than girls in many of these countries. However, there are still many gender inequalities within America, and so to write off saying that we're better off is completely unacceptable because there's still um, the wage gap. Women are paid exactly. so much less than men, and that the amount of money, the disparity in the wages goes down um, even for women of color, being the lowest for Hispanic women. Yes. So it's... And often these women may be single moms, maybe mm -hmm. having two jobs, supporting their families alone. That is just, again, mm -hmm. a cycle. And there's just, there's not a lot of support for these women who are doing things like that. Um, there's and really so just once again, there's a problem right in front, all around us, mm -hmm. here in Alachua County to start with, which, you know, um, and, and Shannon, how do you see things? Um, there's the, the pay scale, inequality, um, just thinking about other things that you might want to bring up. Um. Well, when you see a typical American family, you might imagine a man who's in a suit going to work and the mother is in the kitchen cooking breakfast for the kids before they go to school. And so I see it as the man is expected to do the work, go to to his job right and come back with the money while the mother stays home cleans and cooks and just takes care of the kids in the household and if you would ever see it the other way around you would think why can't the man just go get a job like why is he staying home and just cleaning the house all day and I really see it as people are just kind of expecting this to happen where the woman just doesn't work if the father can or the husband can right make enough money but say both are working outside the home it's still true that the woman carries more weight for taking care of the children for the family for the housework so sometimes has to shoulder a great many other work related at home burdens which just all has a, a scenario that can make it difficult so still maybe not equal saying, you do this, I do this, and we share it all. That and might I be also, the ideal. 
I also have a cousin who is, um, he has two adopted kids, and they have told me a little bit about um, the law with um, how adoption goes, and mm -hmm. if you do some research on it, and you see um, between the mother and the father whether or not they want to give up the child, you'll notice that the way the law is written, that's why many women are left with the child, and the father just leaves. Sometimes is out of the scene. Because the way the law is written, he can. Right. And okay, now we're, we only have a few more moments, but let me bring up the word respect, respect for women. Do you see it? You're in high school. Do you see it in some of these young men you go to school with? No. I know you do in some, but is it lacking in others? Is I it say not? it's lacking. You say it's lacking. Mm -hmm. It's a societal, um, it's societally, there's not the same respect. That women, yes, I understand. And it, it's, and it's, it's just something that our whole society needs to improve on. Respect for women and respect for each other, really. But I want to compliment all that you, Bridget and Shannon, are doing as leaders uh, with the Girl Up Club at Buholtz High School and within our community. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're glad you tuned in, and I hope you will join us next week. Take care. <laughs>